Hello, folks. Thank you for joining. Um, why don't we do this real quick? Can we get a sound check? If um, someone can go, any one of you can go to the questions box, please, and say, hey, Nick, we can hear you. We can see you. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Happy Star Wars Day. <laughs> May the fourth be with you. <laughs> wow, okay, so everyone can hear us. Okay, that's great. And Colleen, you sound great. Um, folks, we we typically wait till 2.02 to get started just because, um, yeah, the number of people in the last minute and a half has doubled in terms of attendees. And people are just kind of finding their way in. Um, but tradition, 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 if you are attending a exclusive webinar for the first time, um, we ask that you go to the questions box and you introduce yourself. What's your name? What company are you coming uh, to uh, attend from? And uh, let's just get to know you a little. That way we also can think about, you know, as we position some of the things we're going to walk through, we can maybe customize it a little bit towards what we think your challenges might be. So please, who's going to be the first one to introduce themselves in the question box? What's your name? Guy Otello from Sprinkler Warehouse. Hi, Otello. How are you? Got Kristen from Fun.com in North Mankato, Minnesota. Awesome. Stacy Popper from Kipling. Hey, Stacy. Pam from Hanalei Company. I usually wear my Hanalei shirt. Um, I'm jealous if you're out there in Hanalei. Um, miss my Chinyung village. Got Dave Ross from Burchard and Plastics. Simran from, ah, uh, uh, yes, hey Simran, how are you? Jack from Epion Medical. Carrie Sanders from EFI. Courtney from Zeewee. Uh, Emily from Spice World. Athena from Happy Tales Canine Wellness, what a great name. Um, David Arndt from CPG.io, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you as well. Um, folks, we have about 400 people signed up to the webinar. We're excited to share a lot of info. Um, Colleen, what do you think? We should get started? Yeah, let's do it. Thanks everybody Thanks. for joining today. Looking forward to chatting. And We'll dive right in. So really quick about exclusives. Um, we're a leading performance partner. We focus on exponential growth for brands. Um, so when we share this presentation, we had a few case studies here, a beauty brand that we grew from 6 million to 48 million in two years, furniture store and hardware store with lots of growth. People like case studies, we like to share that. Um, so how do we do that? How do we achieve performance? Basically, we keep building three things very well. We've got deep specialization in channels, the SEO, Google Ads, uh, Facebook, conversion, email, and of course, Amazon is its own department. So everyone in our Amazon department is a specialist in marketplaces. So we get these specializations. We have a strategy team that coordinates all the strategies across the different channels because you want to have everything centralized and an amazing technology team that pulls in the data from all these channels into holistic views so we can do holistic marketing. That's the underpinning of performance marketing. Here's a handful of our clients just to get a sense of who we work with. And from a technology side, what we start with is this data warehouse for each of our clients that brings in everything from Google ads to ranking data, Facebook ads, the back end of your story, your ESP, Amazon data into one system from which we populate reports and optimization ideas and smarter feeds and things like that. That's us and myself. Uh, my name is Nick Rajpal. I just celebrated my 14 year anniversary here at Exclusive. I came on to help develop our solutions. So I helped develop our SEO, Google Ads, conversion testing, email, and Amazon 
departments, and I also developed our strategy department. And now the company's grown quite a bit between our sister company and supportive team on the data science side, our content writers, and our marketers. We have about 270 employees, and it's been a really nice ride. And I have had the honor of presenting a few times with Colleen, and I'm really looking forward to having you guys um, learn a lot from her. She's going to present the majority of today's presentation. Great. Yeah, and for those who are not familiar with uh, the company that I represent, Ecom Engine has been in the Amazon industry since 2007, so about 15 years now. And uh, we provide software tools to help Amazon sellers automate all different aspects of their Amazon business. Um, we have Feedback 5, which is the number one rated app in the Seller Central Partner Network, or formerly known as the Amazon App Store, which helps sellers with Amazon feedback and review management. And then Market Scout is our tool that helps with Amazon product research to identify new selling opportunities. Um, we have an FBA inventory management tool, Restock Pro, and that helps sellers to know what to restock and when based on sales velocity. Um, so it helps you with your forecasting as well as all different stages of the supply chain from managing suppliers and purchase orders, shipments, printing stickers and labels. Um, so those are the tools. And then, you know, as the director of marketing for Ecom Engine, my job is really just to provide as much helpful content as I can out there in the industry. Um, so one of the ways that we do that is through surveys. Um, so we actually do have a review survey that is uh, going, that is live right now. And it is uh, just through the end of the day today. Um, so Becky's a link into the chat if you uh, want to fill that out later today. Um, but we are uh, offering. Can we, yeah. can we quickly test whether you have mouse control? Sorry, folks. You know, sure. we can only do this after we go live. That's how yeah. go to webinar works. But yeah. let's just we'll see Yeah. So if Becky wants to. Um, Becky's from Ecom Engine here behind the scenes. She'll pop in the link to this review survey. So it's just a great way for us to get some data from all of you on the call on any review challenges that you have. Um, what's working, what's not, you know, pain points um, that helps us to to improve our offerings and uh, share data and results in webinars just like this. Um, so when you get a chance to fill that out today, that would be great. Um, we are giving away 10 $50 Amazon gift cards to 10 um, winners from that survey. So we'll be selecting those in the next day or two. All right, and yep, I do have mouse control. Yep, there we go, I think I did it too fast. So like I said, um, I'm the director of marketing at Ecom Engine. I'm based in Richmond, Virginia. And I've been in the e-commerce industry for over 10 years, and our team uh, just helps to do everything we can to provide more value to Amazon sellers like you. So that's why I'm here today working with Nick to provide uh, information on how you can become a super brand and share some, hopefully, some new tidbits and secrets that you might not be aware of that are out there that can help you. All right, so let's go ahead and dive right into the meat of the presentation. So 10 secret weapons of Amazon brands. Um, so number one, this might seem obvious to, to many of you. Um, I'm sure you've heard of Amazon brand registry, but I wanted to start with that uh, because Amazon registry really is crucial to growing a brand on Amazon. But first and foremost, it's important to make sure that you're protecting your brand. So Amazon brand registry is a great place to start. If you don't have a registered trademark yet, Amazon's IP accelerator program will help you to um, find an IP law firm that, that already has some competitive pre-negotiated rates um, to make sure you can get your, your brand uh, trademarked. And then there's several other programs that Amazon has um, created in the last few years to try to help and support sellers and brands to protect them and make sure that you know listing hijacking, counterfeiting, um, all, all of the, the suspect type of stuff that's happening on Amazon um, does not happen to you. So you are protected as long as you are registered with Brand Registry. These services are available to help you. Um, so I mentioned the IP Accelerator Program. The Amazon Transparency Program, this is a program that helps uh, to identify individual units that you sell and make sure that counterfeit items are not being shipped or sold on your behalf. Um, Project Zero is a self-service tool for sellers where if you come across a counterfeit listing, you can report that and remove that um, in a self-service tool uh, that Project Zero offers. And then the Counterfeit Crimes Unit at Amazon, this is Amazon's in-house team of former prosecutors, investigators, and experts that are doing everything they can to try to remove all of the counterfeit uh, issues that are happening out there. So just know that by Amazon, you know, being part of Amazon's brand registry, then you do 
have access to these types of protections. So before you grow your brand, make sure it's protected. All right, so in addition to protecting your brand, um, Amazon Brand Registry also offers a lot of features to help you to build customer loyalty, build your brand off Amazon and on Amazon, um, help you improve conversions, and just overall grow your brand. So I wanted to highlight just a few of the features that are out there. Um, a plus content, of course, helps you to have more detailed product images, more detailed product information, and that helps to improve conversion rates. Um, we've seen a lot of customers that as soon as they implement A plus content, sometimes their conversion rate increases by 15 or 20% in a pretty short period of time. Um, Amazon Live is an interactive live stream um, on Amazon where you, you can engage with shoppers right there in real time. Amazon Posts is a social media feature um, where you can also engage with shoppers and managing your customer engagement. This is an A-B testing tool that helps brands to A-B test your product title, your product images, you know, see what's working, you know, uh, a version A and a version B of an image or a version A and B of a title, um, see what's converting better and then continue to optimize and improve on that. Um, Brand Catalog Manager, this is a way that you can see all of the other sellers that are selling your brand and what sales opportunities are out there. And the brand referral bonus, this is a way that Amazon is incentivizing sellers to advertise off Amazon, but drive traffic on Amazon to your product pages. So anytime you do that, if you're enrolled in this uh, referral bonus service, then you will get kickback or you know money back if a sale results from your off Amazon advertising that was driven to Amazon and the sale is made. Um, so it's definitely a good way to make some money. Um, the short search term optimizer, take a look at that. It gives you some good recommendations on what search terms might work well for you that you may not have considered in the past. Um, and then Amazon storefronts, they, last time I checked, there were over 300,000 Amazon brands or brands on Amazon that were using storefronts to help uh, share their product catalog, tell their brand story. So Amazon storefronts is a great place to really make your brand look like a big super brand. <clears throat> and then in addition to these features, um, there are a couple new ones I wanted to mention. So social sharing for product images. This was just launched earlier this year. Um, so it's brand new and it's only on desktop right now, but I'm sure it will be coming on mobile pretty soon. But this entices sellers or brands to have very engaging product images so that the buyer or the shopper is more likely to share that via email, via their social channels with their network. Um, but they can easily just click on that little arrow at the image and the link will be copied and they can easily share it to, to their um, social network. So making sure that you have really good quality images and that you're using this social sharing feature, um, which is in beta, but, but most sellers or brand owners should have access to this as long as your brand is registered, um, is, a great, is a great way to um, just get more promotion off Amazon. And then I wanted to mention the gift options. Um, so I highlighted that down there, um, you know, with Mother's Day right around the corner this weekend, um, having your product um, enabled with gift options just makes it a much better buying experience and can certainly increase your conversions. So not just at the holidays or in fourth quarter, but really all of the time because there's always a holiday or a birthday around the corner. And so when people are shopping on Amazon, it's more enticing for them to choose, uh, you know, an item like this, like this candle to send a gift. It's just a much better experience for the, the gift giver and the gift receiver if it already comes wrapped. And as a seller, there's no cost to you. So FBA sellers, this is a total free service from Amazon, um, but you can just go into your brand dashboard and enable gift options and, and you'll see that there as well. And we can post links to any of these, um, you know, if you have questions later at the end of the webinar. But just uh, something to have, consider, yeah. We, we do have two questions that are the yeah. same. Will we get a copy of the presentation and will you email us, us the slide deck afterwards? Yes, everyone's gonna get a copy of this presentation, both the recording and a PDF first. Okay, great, thank you. All right, so um, the next slide here is really about um, brand analytics. So that's the next big tip that we have, is make sure that you activate brand analytics in Seller Central. Um, so as long as you're brand registered, you have access to this brand dashboard, with ha which has a wealth of data in brand analytics. Um, if you have not taken a look at it, dive in today and take a look, there's so much data. And obviously the more data you have, the smarter decisions you can make that will help you to improve your brand. Um, learning all about your customer all throughout the shopping journey, 
learning about what competitors are doing, what other products they're looking at in addition to yours. Um, there's just so much to learn. Um, so I'll mention a few of the, oops, a few of the, um, the reports that you can get in brand analytics um, here. So one is Amazon search terms. So this will show you the top three most clicked items for that search term, as well as your click share percentage and your conversion, conversion share percentage. Repeat purchase behavior is basically just that. It looks at the number of orders of your products that you've received along with the unique customers who have placed them. Um, the market basket analysis, this one is really cool because it shows you what products are most frequently purchased with your products. So this might give you an idea of complementary products that you might want to offer, or maybe give you ideas on how you might want to bundle your items. So if they're purchasing your item along with something else, Maybe if you offered that as a bundle, then they would buy all of that from you. Um, so market basket analysis is a very cool report to help you to grow your, your brand and potentially increase conversions as well. And then the item comparison and alternate purchase behavior is another cool report that can really teach you a lot about your competition. So it shows you which items the shopper is comparing to yours when they're making that buying decision. And when they don't choose to buy your product, what are the top three items that are most purchased when they're looking at your product. Um, so you can learn a lot when you see which those top three are. Take a look at those listings, take a look at those products, their reviews, try to understand why shoppers might be purchasing these other items instead of yours. It could be as simple as you needing to maybe upload um, you know, another image or just add a little bit more to your listing. Um, it could mean that maybe they have certain features or they offer it in you know, different colors or different variations and you don't. Um, but again, take a look at this report. There's a lot that you can glean from it. And then the last one is demographics. There's so much you can learn about the customers who are buying your products and who that target market is. Um, in some cases, um, just as an example, if you're selling a, a health su supplement and you may be thinking that your target market is young men, maybe in their 20s, and if you look at this report, then maybe you realize it's it's really more middle-aged females that are purchasing the product. Um, so that could be surprising to you and it might make you go back to your product team and think, hmm, we were expecting this to be more for young males. How should we tweak this? Or why are they not buying it? Or how should we change our marketing to maybe entice even more females to buy it and convert even more? Um, so you might change the direction of your product or the direction of your marketing based on what you learn from the demographics. So again, there's a lot you can learn from, from these reports. Um, but data is king, so the more data that you have, then the better uh, you know, decisions that you can make to help you grow your brand. And then these are two new reports that just came out this year, the Search Catalog Performance Report and the Search Query Performance Report. Um, so the difference between these two reports is that the Search Catalog Report really focuses on the, um, on, on the, the st all stages of the buyer journey and shows the metrics of your ASINs, um, whereas the search query performance shows what search terms that they're using for that ASIN. In both of these situations, you can customize these reports into the form of more of like a dashboard. So it's very cool that you can select and filter what data you want to see, what's most relevant to you, and save that, and then it's it's just a dashboard um, up on your, your brand dashboard. So right now it is new, so it's highlighted in like a green bar as I have right here. Um, so it's not listed on the left-hand side in the navigation. There's a green bar that says view search analytics, so that's how you access it. But again, you can save all of the filters so that it's a dashboard for you when you access it and it saves all of that each time. So you can compare it or look at it on a regular basis. All right, so we've talked about you know, making sure that you're brand registered, use those features that are available to you, making sure that you're using the brand analytics. There's a lot of data and reports and things that you can glean from that to help you grow your brand. And the third thing I wanted to mention is product review analytics. So of course, you know, as a brand owner, you take a look at your reviews, you see what people are saying about your reviews, but are you looking at it to see what trends you're seeing, what your top ASINs are? Um, and how those are changing. You know, making sure that you're looking at your analytics in a very detailed way can really help you to understand, you know, any trajectory that's improving or declining. Um, making sure that your um, that you're monitoring those reviews is crucial to your success. Because if some of your top ASINs start to get some negative ratings or negative reviews, 
that can really impact your bottom line. Um, so making sure that you have a system in place, a process in place, something like Feedback 5, for instance, does offer very detailed product review analytics. There's just so much you can learn to improve your, your product, and you can also learn a lot about your competition. Um, but step one, in order to take a look at your product reviews, is to make sure you do this in an automated way. So we'd recommend that you set up alerts so that you're notified anytime that you do get a negative review. And that's one of the secrets is that a lot of people don't realize that you can respond or react to negative reviews. Um, several years ago, Amazon pulled back and stopped allowing sellers to reach out to buyers about a negative review. Um, but about a year ago, Amazon started to allow that again, but only for brand registered sellers. So as long as you're brand registered, you can now contact buyers if they left you a critical review. And a critical review includes a one, two, or three star review. Now, when you reach out to them, your hands are tied that you can only uh, use their templated messages and you have two options of what you can do. Um, so you need to go through the process to contact the buyer through Seller Central. Um, and there's two options. You can either send a courtesy refund where you offer either a refund or a replacement of the item, and that comes with its own templated message that you cannot alter. Or you can ask the buyer to clarify any product issues that they mentioned in that negative review. So you do have two options. It is a, a way to reach out and try to engage with that buyer, and you can learn a lot from their feedback. So I highly recommend when you do get a negative review to go into Seller Central and choose one or the other here to either give a refund or a replacement of the item, or ask them to explain a little bit more why they left you that negative review so that you can learn from it. And in some cases, we've seen sellers uh, who have engaged in this way with buyers, and sometimes they'll actually update their review from a one-star review to a three or four-star review. Um, so you cannot ask them to do that, but you just never know. And it's worth either at least reaching out, asking them, getting some more information, um, would be the, the least case scenario if they respond and, and give you some more information. Best case scenario would be maybe they even update their review to a positive one after their experience. Okay, so we talked about product review analytics for your ASINs and responding to those negative reviews, but also monitoring your competitive ASINs are important. So not just your own ASINs, but your competing ASINs can give you a lot of information on what people are saying about their product that might help you to improve your product, or if they're saying something negative about your competition, or that they're, the, the product doesn't have something that maybe your product has, it might help you to tweak your listing or highlight something differently in your photos, images, or product detail pages so that that stands out um, and helps them to choose your product over the competition in the future. Um, and again, you can get alerts for, for new reviews on competitors as well. Um, also taking a look at the trends of your competition. If you're starting to see maybe a really big decline or a lot of negative reviews on their ASINs, that might be a sign to you that you might need to in increase your uh, inventory because if people aren't gonna be buying theirs as often, hopefully then you'll have more opportunities for sales. So as you look at the trends, it could help you uh, inform your restocking decisions as well. And then once you have data, um, on reviews, one thing that many of our customers do is they'll actually export that data to a CSV file, and then they'll go through it, come through it, do a find, upload it to a Word cloud. There's a lot of different things you can do to try to really dive into those analytics. Um, but there's a Word cloud out there. Um, I believe one is just uh, freewordcloudgenerator.com. So that's one that we've recommended before, but there's a bunch of them out there if you just Google it. But if you import your reviews from a CSV file into a word cloud tool like this, then you can quickly identify some highlights you know, that people are saying about in a positive way about your product and any issues that might be jumping out at you. So when I look at this screenshot here, um, or illustration I should say, there's a few words that jump out at me. The word snapped, um, the word tore, packaging, messy, um, so those might be ones that I want to do a quick find and find all of the reviews that mentioned the word snapped or that mentioned the word packaging and see what kind of trends or what people are saying. If there's an issue with our packaging, if there's a reason that the crayons are snapping, um, and the word wish that jumps out at me also lets me know that 
maybe the even if they left five star reviews, there might be people saying, I wish this came with a crayon sharpener, or I wish this came in a set of three boxes of crayons, or I wish this came with a coloring book with the crayons. Um, so it could give you some ideas for kitting or for product improvements um, when you see a word like wish. Um, so again, word cloud is a great way just to, or just a different way really to look at your reviews and see what kind of data you can glean. All right, and then the last tip I wanted to share before I hand it over to Nick is all about um, A-B testing. So we've talked about the analytics for reviews, but making sure that you're getting reviews is really step one and that you're getting them the right way and the most effective way. So in order to make sure that you're requesting for reviews in the most effective way possible, it's important to do some A-B testing. So compare results to see what works best. And to do A-B testing on your review requests, um, the first step is to choose what you want to test. So do you want to test the subject line, the content of the message, what time of day or day of the week that you're sending the message, um, or maybe you want to test the buyer, a buyer-seller message versus the Amazon review request, um, which is the request a review button in Seller Central. So if you want to compare those two or any of these others, you pick one thing to test. Um, and then step two is to set up the test. And you'd always want to do this in a randomized way. Um, so one way to do this is all orders ending in odd numbers can get version A of your message. All orders ending in even numbers can get ver version B of the message. Um, now this can be very difficult from a manual standpoint. Um, so I will just plug feedback five that we make it very easy to do A-B testing. Um, so there is a way to set this up with some rules in feedback five. But then once you do set up your test, whether it's manual or automated, make sure you give enough time to measure the performance. It might take 30 days or so until you have conclusive results and you really see one you know, version um, getting more reviews than the other. And then once you figure out whether version A or version B is working better, switch to that winning campaign and proceed with that one. Um, then once you have that winning campaign, you're proceeded with that one, then go back to step one and choose something else to test. So if the first time you tested the subject line, maybe now test the timing or test, you know, the buyer seller messaging versus the request for review. Um, but continually optimizing uh, your review requests, your listings, you know, everything that you're doing is crucial to building a brand. And then let's see, I think we're on to what, tip number seven at this point? That's right, that was amazing. I, I hope people, have been able to take notes uh, a lot. A lot of people are asking whether the deck's going to be shared. Absolutely, the deck's going to be shared. Uh, PDF and recording copy for everyone. Um, but yeah, this is fantastic. Is everyone okay with the pace thus far? Uh, Rick, Rick, I believe is from uh, Sweater Chalet, right, Rick? So this is a ter terrific presentation. Everyone's liking this? All right, perfect. Well, I'm not going to be as good as Colleen. I, I'm going to try to add a few extra points here, and then we'll get to uh, to people's questions. I just want to talk about things that I find exciting from the marketing perspective. First, um, we a lot of people still see Amazon as just this place where you do um, search targeting, and then you um, you make sure that you show up in the search results. But Amazon has created tons of ways to do targeting now. You can target people for awareness, like before they've even interacted with your product. We can target those individuals after they interacted with your competitor's product or your product. You can target them after they bought your product. But the highest level, the awareness side, is really powerful. This is like some of the good uh, targeting capabilities that we're used to from Google Ads and Facebook Ads finally brought to life in Amazon. So you can target people who um, are in your market, buying your category, that those are in-market buyers. If someone has done a certain amount of activity um, uh, associated with a lifestyle or an interest, there's two different ways to populate based on the data of the user. So categorizations of interest and lifestyle are both based on the activity of a particular user and if they fall into that category. Basically saying, of all the things this person does on Amazon, this is who they truly are. This is truly their lifestyle. This is what they're more interested in. 
like gardening, for example, if they've looked at 20, 30 gardening products, they're no longer just interested in one thing. They're like gardeners. That's a real interest of theirs. And now you want to go towards them as early adopters of your product. And then they also infer things like life events. They're going to travel soon, baby's on its way, things like that. Um, we've been used to and kind of spoiled by having some of this information in the past through Facebook. Um, but over the course of the last six years, all that capability has been stripped away on Facebook. And it's nice to see it reemerge right here. Um, Amazon is not just going to take away marketing capabilities from the Facebooks and Instagrams of the world. They want to pull in all the influencers. There's a new influencer program. This builds advocacy for your brand. And basically what Amazon has done is they defined what an influencer is. Uh, it's anyone who has a significant following on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Snapchat. And they go out there and they basically handpick legit influencers and say, we have, we're giving you an option to build your own store. Put the products that you use on that store. Send people from TikTok and YouTube and whatnot to your store. And when they click through, you're going to get uh, a little bit of cash. So out of all the ways for this entire ecosystem of social media to push its way into e-commerce or to capitalize for themselves and monetize for themselves, this may be the most compelling thing I've seen online in terms of monetization. YouTube's trying something similar right now, um, but it's, it's in alpha. This is significantly better in terms of how they launched it. And when you have these influencers that are now on Amazon, they have a lot of uh, new functionality. They will post videos. They have their own landing page where you want to get featured. And whatever they found shows up in found it on Amazon. There's a lot of tips out there to try to get those influencers to talk to you. But the first step is trying to look at anyone who has already um, posted about you or has posted about your competitors and create a list of who you want to try to reach out to. Then go through and, and check hashtags and whatnot on the social platforms. Create a secondary target list of influencers that you would like to reach out to. Make sure that they're already on Amazon. And then you have to do a direct mailing campaign, a, a direct message campaign to them until they finally agree to post your product. But you have to go to these individuals in their native social media platforms. There's no way to contact them directly through Amazon right now. It's a little bit of work, but a lot of advocacy. Videos, when people type in keywords that you want to show up for in Amazon, you have a lot of different ad types. We have product ad types. That's like your product actually showing up. If you have a storefront, then you can have that headline. Um, but videos also show up. And there's only one video that shows up in the search engine ranking page. So when you choose to get that video, you're basically putting yourself on the spot. But there are certain rules that you can follow where if you follow them, you are kind of pre-closing the person who is watching the video. And you only pay cost per click. You don't pay for views. It's not like YouTube. You pay only if the person clicks. So if you've primed the person to already have all the answers that tell them, yes, I actually want that. I can afford it. It's the product I want. Then when they click in, they have a high conversion rate, which is why of all the different ad types for most accounts, video ads are the highest ROAS return on ad spend, the lowest A cost ads that we run for our clients. But you start with things like know your audience, word clouds. We don't always do word clouds for reviews for our clients, but we read through all the reviews when we're kind of trying to create new content or trying to, to develop videos. We want to know what our audience actually thinks of the product. 
when you have a video, you're you really want to focus on lifestyle. That's that's the instinct as marketers. But if you want to convert, you have to focus on the product, not lifestyle imagery. Stay focused on the product. Show every angle you possibly can. Show the product in use. Keep it as brief as possible, 15 to 30 seconds. Remember to optimize for formats. People typically do not put volume on. So you don't need to have an audio track. It's fine if you do. The text that you have is more important than audio. And you want to make sure that you know it's going to autoplay. People are going to read that. And watch your loop. Watch when the video ends, how it restarts. There should be no blank timing in there. Just keep it clean. And the last is um, subscribe and save. There are a lot of reasons to do subscribe and save, mainly if you have consumable products. But there's a huge upside to subscribe and save that most people don't realize. And that is that the best users of Amazon, so 51% of Prime users, for example, use subscribe and save. But these are not just people who like Amazon, they are the best buyers. 75% of shop uh, subscribe and save prefer Amazon over any other store. So it's more likely that if you're promoting this product, they're going to buy from your Amazon. You're going to make your money back on it. 70% of subscribe and save don't mind paying high ticket items for products. And 61% buy at least once a week, at least once a week on Amazon. So if you want to cut out all the lower qualified Amazon users and just focus on the best, just getting this off a subscribe and save option on your products is going to isolate the best group. One of the things we just wanted to, to opine on is um, as Amazon is no longer just this search place where you search and a shelf shows up and you show up on the shelf, it's not just a digital shelf anymore. You can target people for awareness and branding. You can remarket to them. You can get advocacy. It's starting to follow more of the global e-com model. And the global e-com model is something that we've been trying to help change over time. Um, the original commerce model was that there's this funnel of awareness to interest, desire, action created by E. St. Elmo Lewis in the 1800s. For the most part, in e-com, when people look at their websites, they think about funnels. There's awareness, interest, desire, action, advocacy. They don't always apply that to Amazon. Now with all this new awareness, targeting, and advocacy capabilities, it's time to start applying that rubric. But even that rubric is not good enough because you can't really track an individual buyer from step to step. So I have a philosophy that can't even be tracked properly. Luckily, over the past few years, people have decided to switch away from funnels or from funnels towards flywheels, saying, but I, I don't really care about marketing towards one individual at a time. I want to know what activities happen in my business to grow my business. And those activities should get stronger and stronger over time. This is a flywheel. It's a virtuous cycle. So what we like to encourage people to do these days is to think about marketing from the perspective of the activities that they can impact that make their business stronger and stronger. That is awareness. Consideration that's showing up on the shelf, the old school Amazon. We're marketing to people who've clicked on your product until they buy, that's conversion. We're marketing to past customers to subscribe and save and buy again. And getting your past customers and people in your market to review you. Uh, and also for influencers in your market to advocate. This is a virtuous activity cycle. It is these five activities that you want to invest in. They should keep growing and growing and so will your business. So before we go to the uh, many questions that we have from the group, um, we already have the survey out from um, uh, Ecom Engine if, if you see in the chat box. But we wanted to offer something as well from our side, an exclusive, um, a free growth plan. So once again, the way that we help our clients grow is 
channel specialization with holistic strategy and holistic technology to try to figure out how to deploy that correctly. We have a four step process that we don't charge for. First step is just speak to someone from our team and see if there's a fit. If there is, then you'll meet someone on our side, most likely myself or my colleague, Liam. And we're gonna to start to understand strategically what your ecosystem looks like and what we might need to put into a plan that could help activate more growth. I will go through a lot of different aspects from channel successes to what you are looking for in an agency, product life cycle, et cetera. We'll take a few business days and then we'll put together a sizable presentation typically. 80 to 100 slides of insights and research that we've done and a plan that we believe should be activated for your fastest growth. And in that growth plan, we'll cover why we believe in your business, what all your competitors are doing, including all their investments, so that we can kind of scrape through technology, how we think you should invest for the fastest growth, what your search um, blind sides are right now, how we can activate better buying habits from your customers through consumer behavior, what all your competitors are doing in Facebook and remarketing and email through scraping tools again, what our technology would be for you, our team structure, our pricing, et cetera. So that is usually a 60 to 90 minute presentation. And if we need to, and you have enough data in Amazon or Google ads or SEO, we'll activate people from those channels to come in and do deep dives. Now we don't charge for any of this, but we do need to go through this process to help onboard any individual client because we wanna do it right. So just wanna see who's interested in having us maybe start the process of even, first question is, are we a fit for each other, right? And we can have a quick conversation there and see whether we truly are a fit. And if our 25 years of doing this will somehow help you. So if it's a no, please do click no, no problem at all. And we also know that there's other vendors and other agencies on here. And um, if you get a chance to, to just hit no, that's not a problem at all. But uh, we'll close this out in, let's see, five, four, three, two, one. Thank you, folks. Uh, wow, Great. about 60% of you want us to reach out. Thank you so much. This is fantastic. I uh, will make sure that we start to reach out ASAP after this. And uh, now we go to uh, nonstop questions. We've got such good questions. We knew that if we if we do this presentation, we're gonna get a lot of questions. We predicted it. So let's see what happens. And um, Colleen, do you have any that you want to kind of start off with or? Sure. Um, and Becky and I have been trying to answer some questions here live in the Q&A. So hopefully those who have asked questions are seeing the answers that we're posting. Um, but just in case you're not, I can kind of highlight a few at least trends that we're seeing. So only um, the person who asked it can see the answer. So if you think it's, it's helpful for everyone, please cover it. Okay. All right. I was clicking send to all for everybody to see, but, but maybe it wasn't going through. Um, so yeah, we had several people ask about gift options and how to, how to set that up and where you can do that and if it's only for FBA orders. Um, and by default, neither gift messaging or gift wrap options are enabled. So as an FBA seller, you do need to go in and enable that. Um, so I will just go ahead and put that in the chat then maybe since some people might not might maybe aren't seeing it in the Q and A. Um, so I'll put a link to that. Sorry, got to move all these go to webinar. <laughs> Screens over to find the chat. Let's see. It has a little question mark at the ah, end. I disabled your keyboard in case that was somehow. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you. Like, what is happening here? Um, okay, so gift options. And I can take any questions with me all if you want me to. There you go. 
So there's a there's the link to gift options. Um, it wasn't coming through properly, so I put little brackets around it. So you might just have to copy and paste it. Um, let's see. So so gift options is one thing that people brought up. Um, a couple of people asked about social sharing and how to do the social sharing of images. Um, so it is in beta, and so from what we can tell is that it's not available to all sellers yet, even if you're brand registered. Um, but like many of the brand reg registry features that have been in beta in the past, it doesn't take long and they're pretty much rolled out to everybody relatively soon. So if you don't see it, um, when you go to your product detail page, you don't see that little share icon, just keep an eye out for it and hopefully you'll have access to it soon. Um, but it looks like it's still in beta and not available to everyone yet. So my apologies on that. Um, but at least you know that hopefully it's coming soon for you. Let's see what questions here. Um, we've got several questions about monitoring competitor ASINs, um, and the answer is yes, vendors can monitor competitor ASINs with Feedback 5, and yes, Feedback 5 does allow you to monitor your own ASINs and competitor ASINs. Got, um, yeah, some questions about brand registry. So I'm just going to put a link in to our brand registry guide. That might answer a lot of questions um, that other people might have. So, so that gives kind of a lot of details about what brand registry is, how you register, the benefits of it, the fe a lot of the features and protection programs that I mentioned today are listed on that that in that guide as well. So. Any others came in in the last couple of minutes here? Um, so we have one that just came in from Jackson that you've recently come in to manage a product line which has negative reviews over the years and have not been addressed once. Um, so you're kind of starting from a negative position. How do you recommend moving this from where you are now? Because um, you no longer have time to respond to reviews. Okay. So yeah, so if you have negative reviews, already and it, it's been too much time that you can't go back um although i will say amazon lets you go up to six months back so you can go pretty far back but if, if they're more than six months back you won't have access to um to respond to them but you can go up to six months back to app to send those two templated messages um, but if they're more than six months old i mean your best bet at this point is just to do everything you can to drive positive reviews to help outweigh the negative um, but once those negative reviews are on there you know we can't get them removed unfortunately. So it's just all about trying to get more quantity and more quality and more recent reviews to help offset the old negative reviews. Somebody asked for the natural, uh, for the, the wheel of marketing again. The wheel and natural law of marketing. Yes, I will show that. I've got a few other questions that I got in here. One, um, we talked about highlighting the product in videos, um, and Athena had a really, um, really helpful perspective from Steve Jobs saying, "Don't show people your product; show them what life is like without their product." I think that's a great way of capturing the imagination of a lot of people and potentially getting a bigger awareness boost. Um, my expectation would be uh, if you don't have enough product focus, your return on ads might be a little bit lower, but it just means a longer sales cycle, which is fine. But kind of setting that expectation in advance, um, you just need to know when you bring a tool into marketing, you need to know how to wield it properly. So if that tool is more for imagination and early, then don't expect as many conversions, and that's perfectly fine. But yeah, you might find that someone can really put together a presentation about how life would be bad without the product and it converts better than showing the product no matter what. So it's a, definitely a, a creative challenge there, but a fantastic perspective. Um, Rick asked, what products are best for subscribe and save? Probably consumables, better than apparel. I'd say it's, it's really easy to know which products are truly consumables, but you want to go through analytics and find out some products that are not obvious consumables. Um, as well, where you don't realize how often someone might buy it. Um, if you see behind me, 
plate carbon monoxide detector that is plugged in to my wall. Um, I've bought six or seven of them for my home. Um, I didn't just buy one. You'd think it's a one-time purchase, but it, the data would have shown otherwise. Uh, we had a question that just came in from Sean on how do brands evaluate which images to use for your product detail page um, images. So I would say, you know, you have manager customer engagement, which allows you to do some A-B testing on images, but there's also a tool called pickfu.com. So if you have not tried that, that is one that we recommend to a lot of sellers and they've seen a lot of success with that. Um, so I'll put that in the chat as well, but that, that's a good way to um, crowdsource what images might work best for your um, for your product. And I would just add one thing that having value images makes a big difference. Value images are images that have some pissy popping test text on them. Um, we love the idea of enhanced content and A plus content, but especially on mobile phones, people don't always scroll down to find that spot that has like the enhanced content. And then the formatting can be funny. Uh, but everyone looks at images. So if you can tell the same story through images and say, here are the four distinct uh, distinct features of this product that make it special, um, and it's just like one word at a time, that everyone's going to see. It's going to be easier to understand. Those are called value images. And um, Amazon does it best. Look at any product that Amazon uh, promotes on their own, whether it's the Echo Dot or the Fire Stick, and check out their their um, value images, they're fantastic. Good, and then um, Becky's just gonna put the, the link in again to that review survey that we have going on. So mm -hmm. if you have time today, take that review survey. We'll be happy to share the results of that survey with everybody who engaged with us. And uh, hopefully you'll be one of the 10 winners of the $50 gift card if you complete that. It only takes a couple minutes. Awesome. Folks, thank you for spending almost a full hour with us here today. Uh, hopefully you thought this was helpful and please do fill out a survey. Um, we're going to reach out to a lot of people as is the e-com engine team and we're not going to stop working together and bringing awesome webinars. Uh, Colleen, I always enjoy working with you on these. Thank you so much for your time and for some of the best information I've seen on Amazon in a, in a long, long time. So thank you so much. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's always great to work with the exclusive team. So you guys are a great partner, and uh, we loved all the engagement, all the questions that we had. And you can obviously uh, reach out to Nick or I with any questions. We we and our teams would be happy to help your business in any way. So thank you. Awesome. Thanks, folks. Have a good one. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Take care. Bye.